Looking to spice up your brand, your blog, or Instagram without showing your face? Well, here's a super easy tutorial for how to make a styling board under $15. A styling board is basically the background or the backdrop of a flat lay and a flat lay is a picture taken from above of some products or objects that you want to showcase and it is mostly used for fashion or product or food photography. You can definitely shoot flat lays without a styling board but because I do have wedding photography as a big part of my portfolio, I have used styling boards before. But basically you want a styling board because it is portable and that's what's great about it and this is why it's awesome to have for your blog so that you can have images that you can recreate anywhere you are. The first item is definitely a backboard so I personally chose a canvas because it is sturdy and lightweight and I can use it for weddings but you can also use things like foam core, poster board, um, even the back of like an old sketchbook. Let me just show you because this is pretty hard bound um, and then you can also use like a box, Amazon box, whatever. But um, you can get this super cheap. Hobby Lobby always does 40% off coupons. They are discontinuing that though, I think. Um, but they do have 50% off like every other week. So if one week it's wall decor that's on sale, then the next week is table and then it cycles to wall decor again. So for this video, I am using fabric instead of paint. And you can easily get this from Hobby Lobby, a thrift shop, even around your house, you can get a pillowcase. Um, but you can choose from different kinds of colors. You can make them as bright as you want, depending on what you're using it for but you might want to keep it a little muted so that the objects actually stand out on top of the board um, and then you can choose different patterns speckled checkered stripe whatever you can also look at different materials I like to look at linen and cotton to just keep it kind of simple <laughs> and lastly, you do need some kind of adhesive. So I do have my spray adhesive here, my hot glue, my tape, and you can also use a stapler gun if you want. But if you do want to save money, go back to Hobby Lobby a different day and use your coupon. So I did choose a 20 by 24 because the 24 by 30 seemed too big for my height. But after using this for a wedding, I wish I did have it bigger. For this DIY, you need to iron the fabric first and then lay it upside down on a table to make sure the correct side remains facing out as you lay the canvas upside down on top. I did end up sliding the canvas to the one side of the fabric since I wanted to save any excess as much as I could on the other side. Right here, I'm just making sure I have enough fabric to fold on all sides. Make sure the fabric is the right orientation so you have enough fabric for all sides for your canvas. You will need to fold the edges to avoid fraying. Make sure you measure enough width to fold for the fray and enough fabric to fold and attach to the canvas. Before you start gluing, don't hot glue all the way to the edge of this fabric just because if you do, later on your folds will get really bulky. Um, I totally disregarded that and mine did get bulky. Once you have the frayed edge glued and folded, see how much fabric you need to hot glue onto the wood of the canvas. I had too much so I did slide the canvas to the edge a bit more. If you're using hot glue, make sure you're careful because this can get really hot. As you can see, I'm like rolling my thumb along so that I don't burn myself. After gluing one side onto the wood, before gluing the last little bit, go ahead and trim the opposite side. Make sure you do account for enough fabric for both of the folds. After trimming the other side, go ahead and start gluing one of the sides adjacent to the one side you began with. Since I started with a short edge, I am now doing the long edge next and because there's a lot of like fraying happening, I am trimming that off because I don't want to have to hot glue all of that mess. Um, but yeah, right now I am trimming and gluing the long edge but really I'm just trying to avoid folding that bulky part I messed up on. Okay, yikes, do you see this happening? Do not do this, do not glue all the way to the edge because as I said, it will become very bulky. But overall, at this step, just go ahead and glue the fray and you'll be fine. Okay, here comes the dreaded fold. Oh my goodness. This is basically the fold you would make when wrapping a Christmas present. And I may or may not offer gift bags whenever I'm giving gifts, oops. For this step, you basically fold one side of the fabric onto the wood and then the other side on top, like so. And I won't be repeating this multiple times to show you because I was definitely struggling with it but I also did end up having to trim the edges just because it was gonna get bulky if I didn't. Okay, now that you have the edges pretty much creased, ready to fold, now you can actually hot glue and fold that in. 
And you may need to trim a little bit more again, but overall, all you have to do is hot glue the rest. Okay, as you move on to the other side, the last side, make sure that you yank it taut so that you're not leaving any excess fabric flowing in the middle. And then you just basically have to repeat the folding the fray and folding onto the wood process. Making your own styling board under $15 is the perfect way to take pictures without showing your face. It really changes it up. And if you want to have soft lighting, go ahead and use a window and have it right in front of you. Um, and then another pro tip about shooting flat lights, you may want to get a tripod with a boom arm and I can link one down below, but basically it's just a tripod that lets your camera hang down parallel to the ground. So this is perfect perfect if you don't want to have to hold the camera forever. As far as props go for the flat light, you might want to get objects that are in different sizes and shapes and heights and you might want to prop some up on a block to add some depth and elevation. But this is what the styling board looks like at the end, super cheap, super easy to make. And if you are looking to step up your photo game, go ahead and watch my other videos for more tips.